All right, guys. Uh, this week we're gonna concentrate on solar energy, but I just want to do a couple little quick review things. Um, first thing is um, why do they call them renewable resources? So uh, we kind of shift gears to renewable last week with wood waste. Uh, wood waste is the most like um, the other energies as far as fossil fuels, which means coal and natural gas because we we burn them to boil water, to make steam, to turn turbines. And so um, we're gonna kind of shift away from that. Today, we're not gonna be talking about any kind of burning, um, but we're still gonna be using heat as our source um, for some of it. Uh, a lot of it might just be the sun being concentrated. So what does it mean when we call them renewable? Um, renewable obviously means that it can be uh, renewed in a short amount of time okay and so short amount of time like with wood waste could be 30 40 years um, but that's a lot less than thousands of years so uh, what is inexhaustible um, inexhaustible means it's just replaced immediately so I think when the wind's blowing and when the sun's shining um, those are two examples of inexhaustible um, they're not fully inexhaustible but when the wind is blowing or when the sun is up it's definitely inexhaustible but um, like water energy where the water cycles continually um, cycling through would be probably the best example of an exhaustible like with uh, like with dams where you can stop the water and then have it flow through um, at a constant pace to just have that energy all the time and it's constantly replacing itself so inexhaustible is what that is so inexhaustible is the best renewable energy um, but not all renewable energies are inexhaustible okay uh, so here's our list again um, we're going to concentrate on solar today uh, we went over biomass wood waste last week so we still have a few more to hit on um, in the next couple weeks uh, so what is a renewable resource a natural resource that can renew itself with the passage of time and like we said this passage of time is just really short uh, sometimes like with uh, some of the biomass it can be within a year so we can grow new corn Geothermal is another one that could be probably considered inexhaustible if it's set up correctly. Uh, wind, water, solar, all those things. Okay. Um, and then here's just some examples of inexhaustible. The wind when it's blowing, uh, these huge dams, uh, fully inexhaustible. All right. And then here's our concentration for today, solar energy. So uh, here's a picture of um, just a RV that's pulled out uh, in the middle of uh middle of the sagebrush up there by the wind river mountains um and uh you know it's got enough to run its refrigerator probably everything in there and then when they drive down the road they just lay those flat um here's another type of solar so this is uh photovoltaic cells they transfer energy or the sun's energy exactly into electricity like like instantly the way they're set up um this one is a little bit different this one is a um, concentration one so it's reflecting uh to this receiver uh this receiver gets that concentrated light on there and it superheats uh oil or water depending on how it's set up and then it's going to boil uh water to create or steam to turn turbine so um so there's there's different ways to use solar energy as well so that's another advantage of it All right Okay, so here are the two different types for electricity. There's the thermal power station, and you can see right here, this is a great picture because that sun is shining on there and it is just super concentrating. It's kind of like, a, almost like a laser. It's um, just pointing right there on that and it's just super heating it um, on that receiver. And that fluid is boiled, turned to, tur turned to steam, steam turns turbine. So it's, a lot like what we've been talking about before except for there's no nothing burning so it's not going to give off exhaust of any kind so no uh, pollutants like nitrogens or sulfurs and no co2 so uh, photovoltaic po photovoltaic power stations so these are just called pv cells sometimes or pv panels um, sometimes we just probably call them more commonly solar pa panels or solar cells um, but it just automatically links um, 
most of the time there's some sort of converter that's needed as well where it's going to convert from dc to ac so we usually use ac power on everything like you plug in to charge your phone or your um or your devices or something and and that's ac power if you've ever been in a camper it's dc meaning it uses like a, a battery like a 12 volt deep cycle battery or a car is 12 volt um but but there's adapters and they can be something simple like you plug the adapter into your 12 volt um, thing in the car and it can change it to electricity ac style um, but um so these panels um are here uh the research i did is it takes about seven thousand watts to run an average home i think it said 6250 or something but most most uh larger arrays are just sold 1000 watt increments you could probably get like a 6500 one but uh, anyway so these are the two ways we can uh, reflect it directly to a receiver or we can um, just turn the sun's energy directly into electricity through a PV cell. Okay. So how do PV cells work? Um, the silicon sandwich between a layer of phosphorus and boron. And so that gives us a negative and a positive. It creates an electric field. Okay. Then you can kind of see it just basically is going to rob the electron flows. And so when the sun shines on the panel, the sunlight knocks an electron free. Um, and so it moves that electron down uh, the current. And so that's just what creates electricity. So, so because of the sun, we start those electron movement and it just kind of pushes it down the flow. Uh, kind of really cool, actually, uh, how electricity works. Mr. Robinson knows that quite a bit better than I do um, with his electricity and magnetism class. But cool little diagram here. Good, simple def uh, or explanation here. Okay, um, and so today we just want to talk about um, solar is more than just the solar cells, it's also solar heating. So um, each day the sun gives off an unimaginable amount of energy. Uh, we receive just a tiny fraction of that. We're just this tiny little sphere in the middle of all the space in the solar system. And uh, we can see that visible light coming to us. Um, but the trick is to being able to gather as much as that we can and turn it into electricity or other energy like heating. Um, so our homes use quite a bit of hot water. Uh, we usually use like natural gas or electricity for that, but a lot of people have turned to using solar power for trying to heat water. And so if you've ever been to a big city, you might've seen like these big dark, um, they kind of look like water coolers on top of um, the department buildings and stuff. So that's a way that they're trying to use the sun's power to heat water. Um, here's a solar water heater, just an example. Somebody put this on their house. It's just got black pipes that run through here. And so when they turn the water on, it's gonna run the water all the way through all these pipes and heat it up to bring it in. Um, they also can use solar energy to heat air. Uh, Mr. Adams built one in his house and uh, it's, just, it's just a box on top of his house and it collects the solar energy and it forces that hot air down um, to, I, I believe is his wife's office space now, but just kind of cool. Um, it's like a it's like a forced air, but it's only from solar heat. And so there's a couple of ways to use that. They've been using, they call it passive solar energy for a long time. I'll show you a slide on that a little bit later. But um, the water is carried through these pipes these pipes are always painted black, or sometimes they're the black PVC pipes that are just naturally that color, and it's gonna, black soaks up the sun's rays, so it's gonna heat it up. Um, the hot water can be used for laundry or showers or, or whatever, washing hands. Um, and so there's limitations because it's only gonna be hot when the sun's shining, so clouds and nighttime and all that stuff, obviously, is gonna harm that. Um, and in Wyoming, we have really good sun. If you remember the eclipse, uh, a few years back, uh, a lot of people came to this area because there was a high chance that we were going to have no clouds on that day. So um, here's just some questions to consider. Uh, what is solar energy? It's um, energy from the sun. Uh, we can use it for heating. We can use it for electricity. The sun's energy is what type of energy source? So renewable or when it's up, we could just consider it inexhaustible. How much of the sun's energy do we receive each day on the earth? And just a fraction, so just a tiny little bit. Uh, most systems that capture solar energy change it to what? Okay. 
And so we could say um, we could say heat or electricity. So there's two things there. Uh, probably the most common thing was heat, but now we're switching over to that PV cell electricity. Uh, what advantage does solar heating have? Well, um, like I said, there's no pollutants or relatively none. Um, and uh, where we're at, we we get good sun, so it's it's a reliable source. Uh, what are some disadvantages to solar power? What's the biggest disadvantage? Nighttime um, and cloudiness and just some other factors that we don't have control over. So that's from the reading. Um, and then there's a good video to watch here. Uh, go back and watch that, and then you can kind of just consider these questions. Uh, I'll probably show that in the actual Zoom. Um, but maybe I'll just have you uh, look at it. And so uh, United States does have the sunniest place in the world. It's outside of Yuma, Arizona, and there's some pretty cool panels there um, that are set up. Uh, we have pretty good panels too. One of the questions on your forums today uh, shows a map. And if you look at that map, uh, the dark, dark red is the best places. And so if you look down by Arizona, um, that almost the whole state is that color because there's just some amazing sun there. And we have good sun here in Wyoming too. But um, And then on number nine, if you look at uh, how do we overcome no sunlight at night, they, they're actually finally uh, trying to improve batteries in, in a way to store that energy that can be converted and reused uh, when the sun's not up. And then a lot of times what they'll do is they'll make a power plant. So they'll have solar and they'll have wind, and they might have some sort of generator all linked together. So um, just kind of cool to think about. Okay. Uh, so what are some positives about solar? It's getting cheaper. It's getting way more efficient. Um, we started to see efficiency levels being really low, 10% or less, uh, with the panels. And now they're, they're above 15%. Some of them are around 20%. Uh, if it's out in space, it's closer to 50%. Uh, and the reason why that is, is um, you'll read in your reading, but, uh, you know, outside in space, we don't have an atmosphere. We don't have clouds. We don't have dust. We don't have anything that's going to be blocking the energy from the sun. So uh, I think I, I was remember reading like upwards of 50% efficient outside in space because you don't have all those other things. Um, there's more than one way to have solar energy besides electric, it's also used for heating. Um, it's portable uh, and we can use it uh, for a variety of different things. So we can just have like a small solar panel. Uh, Mr. Robinson has just this tiny solar panel that just recharges his battery for his camper. Uh, I have a double solar panel on my camper and it, it will basically run the whole camper except for the refrigerator really easily. Um, Solar panels are good in Wyoming. That's a positive. We have really good sun here. Um, and then I already said that, but it's also for heat. Uh, what are some negatives? Um, solar is not good everywhere. Um, solar panels do take up a lot of space. However, people have figured out you can use your roofs of your house. Um, if you have a little bit of land, you can make like a little solar array just on the corner. Um, but it does take up some space. Uh, there's some fluctuations, and those fluctuations can actually ruin uh, the converter, can ruin batteries, um, can damage the solar panels, and that can be something like cloud cover or or lightning storms or just some different things that can that can mess with it. Um, it does still take non-renewables. It takes those uh, things that was in so like the boron, the phosphorus, the the silicone. Those are still some non-renewables, but they're they're small. And once they're made, you can still kind of recycle those solar panels too, is what I've been reading is they've been getting better at uh, reusing the old ones to make new ones and those kind of things. And then obviously darkness. <laughs> um, so solar then and now, uh, if you take a look at solar from then and now, uh, let's just look at the then part. So uh, it used to be very expensive, $5 per watt or more, which when you think about it and you need like a 7,000 watt for an average house, I mean, that's $35,000. That's you're never going to probably make up the cost of that uh, over the lifetime of a house. Um, but it's gotten way cheaper. So if we look down here, it's gotten down to like $2. The, the system that you see here is for sale for $1.92 a watt 
Plus, that's not just the panel system. That's got the converter and the hardware needed to convert this into AC that goes directly to your house. So that's that's gotten way cheaper because um, this five dollars a watt was just for the panels initially, and that was a while ago. I can't remember um, what year I found that information, but probably around 2000. So in 20 years, it's gotten way cheaper. Um, uh, it used to use more non-renewables too, and now they've made it more efficient. Um, the photovoltaic cells have gotten smaller and more efficient and better, so it's not going to use as much renewables. Um, they didn't used to be very easy, easily repairable, and you couldn't take like different solar panels uh, from uh, different manufacturers and link them together. And now um, they've kind of made made it to where that's a possibility. It's not always the case, but it can be. Um, it's easier to link, swap, and replace and repair uh, these parts. So, like, if one of these sections got messed up, I could take it out and put a new one in, even though it might be the next year model, and it would still link in and still work fine without messing up the whole system. Um, it used to be limited on use and portability, and now they just have all sorts of things. Uh, you may have even seen those ones that you can recharge your phone, um, or um, like when we go hunting, I have one that I can recharge my uh, headlamp. Uh, just a tiny little um, solar panel. I was going to show you guys that. So, um, and so, just the just the use of it has gotten really cool, really neat. And so, um, I can also use this little solar panel to recharge my um, GPS. So it's just a tiny little guy, right? And so, here's here's my hand, and there's that solar panel. Way cool, huh? And so um, I can plug it directly into, here's my headlamp that I, that I use when I go hunting. Okay. okay. And so I can just take this and I just plug it directly in here, put it in the sun, and it recharges my, um, my flashlight, okay, uh, which is pretty cool. And then I can also use this to recharge, like, my GPS. So... They use it to recharge um and so just pretty cool they make these mats that roll up real nice tight you can lay them out um and then recharge your your gps is probably the most important thing or your satellite phone or um some people use their phones when they're out there but sometimes you don't have service in the wild so um they used to be used more passively so here's the anazazi tribe and so they built their whole um village underneath this cliff and then in the winter time when it got cooler they had that lower south sun and uh it just kept them warm throughout the winter the the passive solar heat and they would heat these rocks up and and by the time morning rolls around they might be getting a little chilly but then the sun came up again and they would just get warm again so pretty cool um so it's been around a long time solar energy has been used since the dawn of man cool uh what is the future of solar uh, Tesla has this idea. They've started making these um, solar uh, shingles, basically. So it's a solar roof, they call it. Uh, but the way it's set up is it's going to shed the water. It's going to be like it's going to replace your shingling. Um, but it, they're individual solar cells. Um, so it's a little bit better than uh, solar panels because once you put the roof on and then you start drilling holes in, there's a chance for leaking. Um, there's also some talks of actually requiring new homes that are going to be built to have some sort of alternative energy source and all that all energy is probably most likely going to be um, most likely going to be solar because it's the easiest and um, probably the most abundant. It's not good everywhere, though. Uh, there's also some incentive programs. There used to be a lot more about 10 years ago, but uh, there's a there's talk that they're going to have some of this cost share come back. And then there's some other crazy ideas. Uh, there's a video maybe on the slide. I don't know if it's on the slides anymore, but there was a solar roadway that they were trying to do, but that was kind of a scam. Um, in India and China, they're developing some walkways that are uh, solar. The problem with that is, is they get dirty and then they're not as efficient. Um, so they have to find a way to keep those clean. Um, and and there's, other, there's some other ideas that are thinking about trying to make like all federal government buildings have some sort of solar energy on them. Um, and then there's some states that are maybe adopting that as well. So 
So there's just all sorts of crazy cool ideas about how to use solar. Um, so maybe you guys can think about some of those or, or record or uh, research some of those. Okay. All right, and so uh, the solar reading is uh, from this website here. And so you're just gonna be using this uh, to answer questions. The questions are in the order of the reading, so you can just kind of read the question and then just go through and, and read you know, a section at a time and you should find the answers that you need, okay? Um, so pretty simple. Uh, they look like, the solar questions look like this. Okay, so where does the solar radiation come from? Uh, you'll find that, true or false, a couple of true or false, but it's in order of your reading. So uh, just read the question. Uh, try to find it in the, in each section should be fairly simple, but take your time. Uh, you only get one chance at this, and then if you do want to do a retake or get better your score, you have to show up at office hours at two on Friday, um, and I'll go over with them and and talk to you about them. Then maybe you can uh, resubmit, but you get one chance. So take your time, read the questions carefully, read the reading carefully. And it's in order. The questions are in order of the reading. So there's quite a bit of reading there to do. But read the question first, find it in here, then read the next question, find it in here. So just go through, read the question, then read the sections, and you'll find the answers. All right. Um, other than that, have a great week. Uh, like I said, if you don't do as well as you think you should, um, then you need to come see me at 2 on Friday. All right.